If you're like me, your first factory in desync probably turned into a logistics mess with an inefficient logistics network, or worse, total deadlock of resources. Thankfully, with a little bit of basic programming knowledge in-game, you can turn a hectic mess like this into a much more organized and efficient oil lubricated machine, which is what I hope to teach you today. Now in this example we have a basic early game factory with miners taking items to storage then returning to mine resources. We also have a handful of blocks connected to the network doing all the transportation. In theory this works well, however in practice transport bots go back and forth all over the place making long inefficient runs as well as saturating transport lanes. The miners are even more problematic because miners will drop off the minerals but only go back if there are minerals within sight range. Or for example if the storage is full, miners will wait at the storage until a slot becomes available. This causes deadlocks as transports can't collect the resources needed. The solution though is simple, we need to add middlemen between the miners and the storage, as well as dedicated transports between storage and various facilities, but to do this we need to understand registers and simple programming. The registers are the four buttons by the on switch. We have the signal re register. This is mainly used in more advanced programming, but for now this allows us to set a prompt for production which can be dragged to a module for production. This can then be married with the next register, which is the visual one, to display what is being produced. The visual register, which we've just mentioned, shows a visual prompt so that we know what the subject is doing. This prompt can be assigned a numerical value, if so it will display the amount and if connected to a module will collect that amount before continuing the command sequence. For example, if a miner's visual is set to 5 metal, it will harvest 5 metal and then deposit it in the storage that's connected to it. If set to infinite, it will count the amount of resources it's con collected up to its maximum storage allowance. We then have the store register. Now you can connect this to a type of storage and the subject will deposit its inventory there when full. We then have the go to register and this sends the bot to a particular area and it will then wait there. This can also be done by highlighting the subject and right clicking or dragging the go to register of said subject onto the map. Now if we do set it via dragging the register to the map, the bot will save this location and it will always return to this once its commands are set and it's fulfilled them. Now another important thing that we need to note is the logistics network. If this is turned on for a particular subject, the subject will do any jobs available when it is unable to fill fulfill its primary commands in the register sequence. This is useful for transport bots in the early game to organize resources, but eventually we want to have dedicated sections of networks in place so that bots don't fly back and forth inefficiently. Although it is important to note that if it is connected to the logistics network, what we can do is right click this button to give a list of jobs which we can allow or deny, which means we can deny transporting items if we want them to solely do the job that's asked. This is important to note for our system today. Now with a basic understanding of the registers, we have covered the simple programming prompts we'll encounter in the early game, but we can go on to do much more advanced behaviors, which I do hope to cover in a later video. So if you are interested in seeing that, make sure to subscribe and do let me know that that's what you want to see in the comments below. So with that in mind, how can we use the information to clean up this sprawling factory that I have here? So firstly, we need to produce some designated transport bots. These will transfer items between the group of miners and a dedicated storage in the factory. We can do this by moving this bot near to the miners. 
and then telling the miners to store the resources in this bot. Now the miners will then, once they've deposited the resources, return to mining and the bot can then store the resources at a storage point. But make sure that the go to register is selected next to the miners. This way, the bot will be the one doing all of the runs back and forth rather than the miners. This will also mean that the bot will take a full inventory of resources and drop it off at the storage point before returning to the miners. So with that out of the way, let's focus on the logistics network. First, let's add another bot, this time between the storage and the dedicated production buildings. Here we will set the go to register as the dedicated storage building supplying the items. Next, we will turn on the logistics network, but we're going to right click so that we can only deliver items. At this point, the bot will deliver the items to the buildables. However, with multiple slots available, it may choose to help other buildings fulfill their demand if it does not have an outstanding available command. So what we can do here to save the bots going back and forth is lock all of the storage slots as the particular item that it's going to be transporting, such as metal ore. Now it will only collect and drop off the metal. Now at this point we should dedicate a transport bot for each item that we're producing and set it also to the logistics network as we have done previously. The hope is that these dedicated transport box will do the majority of the transportation, ideally just from the production facilities to a storage. But we will then have to dedicate a few bots to general logistics. These things will cover random items that are being moved between areas, perhaps if you've gone exploration and found some resources, or building new sections of the factory or assisting a particularly high workload area. Now, if they are used regularly in a particular area, it may be worth setting up some more dedicated transports to help alleviate the, the stress on the area. And I also highly recommend labeling the visual register as something to make them stand out as general logistics, such as the green dot that I've used here, or for the dedicated resource bots, use the visual as the dedicated resource. Just so that you can see at a glance what's dedicated, what's general, and you can pull them away as and when needed. Now, in theory, at this point, you should have a much more smoothly running factory for the early game. And as you can see, I've done exactly this here with having the various bots dedicated in each of the areas. And you can see how it runs much better for me. But if it has helped you, make sure to hit the thumbs up. And also, if you are interested in seeing more desynced, then why not check out my next video that I have on display here. But guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, special thanks does go to all of our amazing supporters on Patreon, most notably our Solo Clips patrons. James Owen, Fireless and Treble, as well as our Lunars, the Calamity, Ben, Star, and that dude AW, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Dashlon. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.